Next, we're going to look at some situations in which we can take information about uh, certain processes and uh, use them to maximize profit. Um, now, this does require a little algebra, but um, I don't think the algebra we'll see is that bad. Plus, you know, I, I um, may provide alternative explanations to things that, uh, you know, maybe, I mean, comparing the way I see them to the way I was taught, I think the way I see them is more clear than what I was told when I first learned the algebra that we're talking about here. Um, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully, I'm right as that applies to you. Um, but we'll see uh, what I mean as we go through these examples. Um, example, a clothing manufacturer has 60 yards of cloth. Shirts require three, a shirt requires three yards of cloth, and a vest requires two yards of cloth. Shirts generate a profit of $5, and vests generate a profit of $3 each. And the question, what level of production will maximize profit? Well, what we're going to do here is a goal. Construct what's known as a feasible region. What's a feasible region? Well, uh, let's uh, do that and then, um, then apply the corner point principle, which states the maximum profit, so I'll underline the corner point principle, the maximum a profit occurs at a corner point of the feasible region. So we're going to construct a feasible region and then consider corner points of the feasible region and then compare the profit at those corner points. What's a feasible region? Well, we can use this information to set up some equations which give us a feasible region. The feasible region is going to be, um, we're going to interpret it as a chunk of the Cartesian plane based on our constraint conditions. Our constraint here is that we have only a limited amount of cloth. Um, and what we're going to do to figure this out is set up a couple equations. And to do that, I always like to clearly define the variables. So let x equal number of shirts. And let y, I mean x and y are the, the nice variables in algebra, so um, I always like using x and y. Let y equal the number of vests. Because we're looking for a level of production that will maximize profit, we're looking for an x and a y. Well, we can find two equations from this. So first, define variables. Next, we're going to find two equations. Um, one of them is going to be with the constraint. Uh, one of them is going to be profit. I like finding both pr uh, equations at the beginning. Um, yeah, I'm going to find both equations at the beginning. Um, so our profit equation, we'll find that first. Um, and then we'll talk about the cloth constraint. The profit, well, if x is the number of shirts, shirts generate a profit of $5 each. So if you sell one shirt, you've made $5. If you sold five shirts, you've made five times five, $25. If you sell 38 shirts, you generate five times 38, $190. Why is five times 38, 190? Because 38 divided by two is 19. Side work, I mean, this has nothing to do with this question really. Uh, 38 times 5 equals 38 times 10 divided by 2. 38 divided by 2 is 19, which times 10 is 190. Now, I don't have my 38 times tables memorized, but I do know that 38 divided by 2 is 19. But again, uh, it's not what this question is asking. But 
our profit for selling X shirts is 5X. You sell 5 shirts, you make 5 times $5. You sell 12 shirts, you make 5 times $12. So our profit from shirts is $5 times the number of shirts. Our profit of, from vests, well, they're $3 times the number of vests. And here, Y is the number of vests, and X is the number of shirts, so our overall profit is 5X plus 3Y. Well, okay, there's one equation. Our other equation is going to use our cloth constraint. What's our cloth constraint? Well, each shirt requires three yards of cloth. So three yards of cloth per shirt times the number of shirts gives you how much cloth is used. So three yards of cloth times X shirts gives us an amount of cloth. You use a... Uh, you make four shirts, that requires 12 yards of cloth, three times four. You require, you make X shirts, shirts require three yards of cloth, three X amount or yards of cloth is used. Vests require two yards of cloth. Number of vests we're making is Y. So we have three X plus two Y is the amount of cloth that we use. Three yards of cloth per shirt, two yards of cloth per vest. And what do we know about this? Well, we have 60 yards of cloth. So the amount of cloth we use for shirts and vests combined must be less than or equal to 60. And this equation right here is going to give us, in this case, our feasible region. Now, we have to graph this. Who remembers how to graph lines? Well, I do. Um, yeah, I can put it over here. Um, I remember how to graph lines. I would imagine a large handful of you haven't seen that in potentially three, four years. So let's go over how to graph lines. This, well, this equation right here is a line. This profit equation isn't going to matter. We're going to want this when we um, find our profit. This equation right here, our constraint, the thing holding us back, gives us our feasible region. And what's this going to look like? Well, it's going to look like a line. Um, I'm going to restrict the line to just the first quadrant. Um, so this is going to be, what, number of shirts, number of vests. I mean, I, I could say, uh, I don't know, number, shirts, X, number, vests the y values. And it is going to look like this. I'm going to restrict to the first quadrant because we're not going to make a negative number of shirts. That's not feasible. Um, now, it is a line. How are we going to find this line? Well, we're going to find this line by finding the y-intercept and the x-intercept. How do we find those? Well, let's find the y-intercept first. What happens? This is an ordered pair. What is this ordered pair? Well, you start here, you go over zero and up something. Over zero and up something. X equals zero. You go over zero and up something. So set X equal to zero in our uh, constraint equation. What happens when X equals zero? Um, I'll write it up here. I'd like to write it here, but I, I drew that a little too close x equals 0 there. Um, what happens when x equals 0? What's y when x equals 0? Oh, um, I should mention, uh, before even discussing what this line is, that this inequality just tells us that um, the only possible values that satisfy this are going to be under the line. Um, I'll draw that more when we label these ordered pairs. Um, but this line represents the equals 60 portion of this inequality. Um, if x equals 0, that goes to zero. What y value makes 2y equal to 60? 2 times 30 is 60. How about down here? What's this ordered pair? Well, how do we find this ordered pair? Over something, up zero. Over some x value, up zero. Up y value of zero. So here, we have an ordered pair with y equal to zero. What happens if y equals 0 here? Well, 3x equals 60. 
x equals 20. 3 times 20 is 60. So we get 20 and 0. Um, so right here, we have uh, this line is where it equals 60. Now, the feasible region, once we have that line, is going to be the region here under the line and above and including uh, the axes. So, I mean, this is technically still part, these axes right here are still part of the feasible region. But we use our constraint on, in this case, cloth to find our feasible region. Well, um, now we've found our feasible region, we can apply the corner point principle. The corner point principle says the maximum profit occurs at a corner point. What are the corner points here? Well, there are the two labeled. And this point down here, 0, 0, is still a corner point there. So if we're going to follow the uh, uh, corner point principle, we're going to have to include 0, 0, even though I mean the profit is 0. Um, so we have our feasible region. We have our corner points. All we have to do now, we know the, pro the maximum profit will occur either here or here or here. So let's uh, find the maximum profit. I'm going to put it on this board. Uh, so how, I'm going to do it with a chart. So let's do point profit. So if point, we have 0, 0. Point, we have 0, 30. Point, we have 20 and 0. So what is our profit at 0, 0? Well, profit equation is right here. x equals 0, y equals 0, profit is 0. How about at 0, 30? What is our profit at 0, 30? 5 times 0 is 0. 3 times 30 is 90. So the profit, 0 plus 90, is 90. How about the profit at 20, 0? x equals 20, y equals 0. 5 times 20 is 100. 100 plus 0 is 0. Um, and now we haven't answered the question that was asked. What's the question that's asked? What level of production will maximize profit? So we'll make our conclusion. Uh, 20 producing 20 shirts and 0 vests maximize profit. Now, this example has only one constraint. What would happen if we have two constraints? So let's look at this example. A toy manufacturer has 60 units of plastic and 360 minutes of labor. Um, this board is, these boards are getting pretty dirty, so I'm going to have to clean them in a moment. Um, I probably should have before this one. Um, a toy manufacturer has 60 units of plastic, 360 minutes of labor. Making a skateboard uses 5 units of plastic and 15 minutes of labor. Making a doll uses 2 units of plastic and 18 minutes of labor. So we have right now two constraints. We have a plastic constraint and a labor constraint. That differs from our previous example where we had only one constraint. Um, and we'll see how this changes our feasible region. Uh, where was I? Skateboards generate a profit of $3 and dolls generate a profit of $2 each. What level of production maximizes profit? Well, again, we're going to define our variables and set up some equation so that we can find our feasible region. So we are making our variable quantities are the number of skateboards and the number of dolls. So let's let x equal the number of skateboards. And let's let y equal the number of dolls. Now, we can immediately find, in this case, three equations. So let's first find a profit equation. What's the information on profit? Each skateboard gets $3 of profit. Each doll is $2 of profit. 
So our profit equation is three times the number of skateboards sold plus two times the number of dolls sold. Okay, what are our constraints? Well, we have 60 units of plastic. So I'm going to write the constraints like this. So I'm going to start off. We know our units of plastic is going to be less than or equal to 60. Um, how much plastic does each skateboard use? Each skateboard uses five units of plastic. How about each doll? Two units of plastic. So 5x plus 2y less than or equal to 60. The amount of plastic we use must be less than or equal to 60. Um, how about the other constraint, labor. We have 360 minutes of labor. Um, in one of these, I'm not going to play with units by saying we have six hours of labor, each thing takes 15 minutes. I'm going to keep the units the same. And no reason to change units around. Uh, 360 minutes. A skateboard uses 15 minutes of labor. A doll uses 18 minutes of labor. So right here we have our profit equation and we have our um, two constraints, our plastic constraint and our labor constraint. And what we're going to do is use these two constraints to construct our feasible region. Um, and where do I want to draw this? I'm going to draw it here. To find the feasible region, we are going to, well, to find the corner points, we are going to need some algebra. Um, I'm going to do the algebra over here. So here I'm going to put the feasible region. Again, we're going to construct two lines. Um, before even drawing the lines, I'm going to do the... Uh, x and y intercepts. And then I'm going to draw the lines. So remember, a y intercept occurs when you go what? Over 0, up something. Over 0, up something. x equals 0, up something. When x equals 0 here, what do we get? x equals 0, y equals 30. I'm going to draw that a little higher. Up here, we have 0, 30. x equals 0, y equals 30. It's 2 times 30 is 60. What about the x-intercept? x-intercept over something, up 0. y equals 0, 5x equals 20, x equals 12. 12 times 5 is 20. So right here we have our first line. Now how is this other line going to change it? Well, I'll tell you right now, the other line is going to look something like this. And look how that changes the feasible region. The feasible region for the first line is under the first line. The feasible region for the second line is under the second line. So now our feasible region is under both lines. So our feasible region is this hump. We still have the point zero, zero. Our feasible region is down there. But notice that when these lines intersect, it generates another corner point. And on that board over there, we're going to do the algebra to find that. But before doing that, I'm going to find these two points on this other line. Uh, so the other line, over 0, up something. So let x equal 0. When we go up, 18 times 2 is 360. So up 20. And over here, we go over something, up something. And we technically don't need this because it's not in the feasible region, but we should still find it to be sure. It's on the other side of 12. Um, so over something, up 0. Over something, up 0. 15x equals 160. What's that? So 15 times 24, 160, 360. Uh, yeah, that works because 15 times 20 is 300. So yeah, that point is over there. And uh, these lines do look like that.
but now we need to find this point. So how do we find that remaining point? Well, what happens on, the, on that point? It's on this line and it's on that other line. So all we have to do is set these two lines equal. How can we do that? Well, um, maybe I'll do it in a different color. Well, here's how we can do that. We don't care about the inequalities because these are on the line, so let's just make them equalities. Uh, those of you who know linear algebra could use a matrix if you want. Uh, we don't have to do that. Um, actually, doing it this way is faster than using linear algebra. But we have these two equations. What are we going to do? We're going to cancel a variable. How are we going to do that? Well, here's how I like to do it. Draw a line like that. Force some of the coefficient. Force a coefficient on a variable to be the same. And I'm going to look right here at these x's. We have 5x, we have 15x. How can we make a 5 a 15? How can we make a 5 a 15? Multiply that first equation by 3. If you multiply that first equation by 3, now our two equations look like this. If you multiply the first equation by 3, that gives you 15x, 2y, 180. Leave the second one alone. Now our two equations look like that. And now we can subtract this second equation from the first. And doing that, the x's go away. Subtract the second equation from the first. 15x minus 15x is 0. 6y minus 18y is negative 12y. 180 minus 360 is negative 180. So we looked at, in this case, dealing with the x's. You could have also multiplied the first one by 9 and canceled the y's. Um, but I, I just multiplied by 3 because the x's were written first. Um, multiply this by 3. To make the coefficients on x the same, subtract, we get negative 12y equals negative 180, and now we can solve for y. Uh, 12 times 10 is 120, 12 times 15 is 180, so divide by uh, negative 12, you get y equals 15. Well, look at that. y equals 15. What does x equal? How can we figure out x? Well. You could use any one of these four equations. I'm going to use the first one because the numbers are the smallest. So using this first equation, substituting y equals 15, we have 5x plus 2 times 15 equals 60. 5x plus 30 equals 60. That's a 30, not a 36. So 5x equals 30. Maybe I should have not draw, have that much space there. 5x equals 30, so x equals 6. So x equals 6. So to find that intersecting point, we did have some algebra to do. But we um, set up our equations, multiplied by, uh, in this case, 3 helped us cancel out the x's eventually, solve for y, and then use that in one of these equations to solve for x. You could use this equation if you want, but I mean, these numbers are more appealing than uh, those numbers, I think. And then you find the x value, and now we still haven't answered the question. The question says, what level of production maximizes profit? We still have to apply the corner point principle. Compare the profit at all four of those cor corner points. Um, so you might, in your notes, want to just write this under all your work. I'm going to erase these equations and just write it by the profit equation. Um, so again, I'll make a chart. So uh, point profit, all of the points, 0, 0, 0, 
20, 12, 0, 6, 15. We need to find the profit. Profit equation, 3x plus 2y. Skateboard's profit of 3. Dawes' profit of 2. 3, 0 plus 2, 0 is 0. 3, 0 plus 2, 20 is 40. 3, 12 plus 2, 0 is 36. 3, 16 is 18 plus 2, 15 is 30. 18 plus 30 is 48. So here, um, again, at, at x equals 6, we get 3 times 6, 18. At y equals 5, uh, y equals 15, 2 times 15 is 30. 18 plus 30 is 48. So the maximum profit is 48. And the level of production, oh, that's a terrible sentence I'm going to write here. That's OK. Of six skateboards and 15 dolls. That's how we arrange them. Yes, x equals number of skateboards. That, that, this is one of the reasons I like explicitly labeling these variables, because right at the end, I don't want like, to flip them around. Um, the production six skateboards and 15 dolls will maximize profit. That says profit. Um, so again, when we have two lines like this, it does generate an extra corner point that we have to use some algebra to find. Um, I don't think the algebra we have for these problems is uh, too bad. I mean, I, I think it's, you know, that there are many, many things in algebra I consider much more annoying to deal with than finding the intercepts and this. Um, with finding the intercept, you could memorize x equals 0 over here, y equals 0 over here, and substitute. Um, I always, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 29. I've done these types of things for 14, 15 years. Um, every single time I think of an x-intercept and a y-intercept, I think exactly how I talked through here. Over 0, up something. So x equals 0. Over something, up 0. So y equals 0. Um, so that type of thinking, I mean, I think that type of thinking is very helpful for organizing these x and y intercepts. And the algebra over here, um, I mean, it's, it's all going to be essentially the same, where you have to analyze these coefficients, subtract things, and then solve for the two variables. Um, so on the worksheet, there are um, a couple of these that are definitely worth uh, working on. Uh, they will have two constraints like this one does.